Hello everyone, my name is Sazi, an accounting tool lecturer at Rhodes University and I will be taking you through now an accounting treatment for the disposal of property, plant and equipment. And so the accounting treatment that we need for the sale or the de recognition of asset is first and foremost to de recognize the asset which is eliminating it out of our books so we get rid of the asset within our financial records and we do so by also recognizing on the other hand or recording now the proceeds that we would have received in exchange for the asset or if we've exchanged the asset in a form of a barter transaction the asset that would have been received in in in, in essence and similarly we would also recognize any profit or loss that would have been realized from the, dis the disposal of the asset could be recovered it could be the asset could be disposed for no profit in which case there is no profit or there's no loss which is a break even case and so we would see if there is a profit when the proceeds now what we sell the asset for if it exceeds the carrying amount of the asset which we will shortly just recap on what it means and so if we realize a profit from a sale of an asset that forms part of our other income now Contrary, if we sell the asset for below its carrying amount now, that is the proceeds are less than the carrying amount of the asset, in that case we would realize a loss which would form part of our operating expenses. And just like I said earlier, if we sell it for its carrying amount, there is no profit or loss that would be recognized, in other words it would have been sold at break even. And then how we get to our carrying amount now, that would be our cost, which would always in, more, in all cases be exclusive of VAT. And that is now assuming we're dealing only with a VAT vendor that is buying from a VAT vendor and without complicating it for, for, motor, for motor cars or anything like that, that cost should be exclusive of VAT and would deduct the accumulated depreciation and impairment. And importantly to note, the accumulated depreciation and impairment losses should be from the time that the asset was purchased to the date of disposal and we will see that kicking in as we do an example just in a little bit. And so the required calculations that will enable us to recognize the asset and, and process all these entries that we need include amongst others the calculation of the profit or loss on disposal which as we've explained just in the previous slide is your proceeds less your carrying amount and therefore we need the proceeds amount and then we also need to work out the carrying amount on the other side alternatively we could use the general ledger accounts to work out the profit or the loss on the disposal of an asset and we'll see that when we do the asset disposal shortly and so the disposal would affect the following accounts or elements of our financial statements. Firstly, it would be the general ledger that would be affected as we would know that we would have first processed this entry into our general ledger, affected the cost of the asset and also the accumulated depreciation, which we now would have to de-recognize. We do so by processing the general entries relevant that we'll see shortly now and they would immediately affect our general ledger accounts. But also our financial statements would be affected by the disposal of the asset as we would recall that that asset would be sitting in our statement of financial position and now it is in that exact statement that would be de-recognizing the asset and the profit or loss that would be recognized or that would be realized from the disposal of the asset will be processed in our statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. It would also have an impact on our state, a statement of cash flows as we would realize there would be now proceeds received if we dispose our, our, disposed our asset for cash. We recognize that under the cash uh, flow from investing activities. And we'll also have a quick glance at our disclosure now in terms of how our note now in relation to the statement of financial position figure would also look like where we're reconciling the cost and the accumulated depreciation and the carrying amount now at the beginning to the carrying amount at the end of the year. And so, things to look out for. Both our proceeds, that is the amount that we sell the item for, and the cost, that, uh, the cost of the item that is disposed need to be VAT exclusive. And this is provided both the vendors, that is our entity, and from who the person that we've purchased the item from is, is, is a VAT vendor. And therefore, a quick calculation without any emphasis or focus on the VAT calculations, it would be simply taking the VAT inclusive amount multiplied by the 100 over 114 to simply get the exclusive of that element. Regarding the accumulated depreciation, things to look out for and to take note of is the method of calculating or working out your depreciation, which could be either the straight line, which is also the cost method, or the diminishing or reducing balance method. On the straight line method, you're simply depreciating the cost over the estimated useful life of the asset, or you apply the percentage on the cost. 
And on the contrary, if you're using the diminishing or reducing balance method, from the second year onwards, you need to always take out the accumulated depreciation, the previous year's depreciation against the cost before you apply the percentage to work out your accumulated depreciation. In other words, the depreciation on the diminishing or reducing balance method is based on the carrying amount just at the start of that particular year. And also, we need to be very careful when the item of PPE is purchased during the year or is disposed during the year that we apportion the depreciation for that part of the year. So we take the number of months that the asset was available for use within the business, divide it by, by 12 to get the exact apportionment for that particular period. Just as an additional point, we may convert the percentage to the number of months if we wish to do so for the straight line method, where if the percentage is 10% per annum over the, over the life of the asset, that could easily be converted into 10 years or 20% into 5 years and so on. And, then, and so now let's do the application now of the principles that we have just looked at now by way of an example. Okay, and so on 31 March 2016, ABC sold one of its two delivery vehicles for 80,000 VET exclusive. And so we note first and foremost our proceeds now would be the 80,000 and the vehicles were purchased on 2 January 2015 for 150,000 VET exclusive each. And careful to note that these were two vehicles, but only one was disposed on 31 March 2016, and to which we will be focusing on its accounting. ABC depreciates its vehicles using the straight line method over five years, and ABC has 31 December year end. And immediately we can note from here that the vehicle disposed on 31 March 2016 was sold during the course of the year. And it is very imperative for us now to note that such a vehicle will need to depreciate it until that date to work its carrying amount. As pertaining to now the disposed vehicle, we as said, uh, as I've said already, we need to depreciate it for the three months into 2016 year and until now the date of disposal, which is 31 March 2016. We will need then on the 31st of March 2016, the, dis the disposal date, we need to de-recognize the vehicle, both its cost and the accumulated depreciation since acquisition until the date of disposal. We will also have to recognize the 80,000 proceeds that we would have re uh, received and then see if we've sold it for a profit or a loss and, re and recognize such profit or loss. And then our calculations for 2015 now, we need to calculate our depreciation for both vehicles and for each vehicle now would be the cost of 150,000 per vehicle over the total estimated useful life of five years, getting us to 30,000 depreciation for the year for each of these vehicles and for both it would be the 60,000. And then for the 2016 financial period now, with particular focus only on the disposed vehicle now, we need to take note of the apportionment for the number of months until the date of disposal. And so the vehicle would have been in the business from January until 31 March 2016. Hence the depreciation now apportioned for the three months out of the 12 to get to the 7,500 rent. And therefore in total, the accumulated depreciation for the disposed vehicle now since acquisition to date of disposal will be 37,500 being the 30,000 from 2015 and the 7,500 uh, for the 2016 financial period helping us now to work out the carrying amount which is the cost less the accumulated depreciation the cost price from the acquisition date was the 150,000 and the accumulated depreciation as previous has just worked out now from the date of uh, acquisition is 37 and a half giving us the accumulated the carrying amount sorry carrying amount of 112,500 from there on we can work out now our profit or loss on disposal being the difference between the proceeds and the carrying and the carrying amount and as we've said in the previous slide if the carrying amount exceeds the proceeds as it is the case in in our situation now we would have a loss and when the proceeds exceed the carrying amount we have a profit and so that loss will be realized and recognized in the operating expenses we will see just uh, in a short while and so Important to note, on the reporting date now, that is the 1 December 2016, we only need to see the cost and the accumulated depreciation of the remaining vehicle. The disposed vehicle should not reflect as it would have been de-recognized on 31 March 2016. That is important to see. And so we begin in 2015 by recognizing and recording the assets being the two delivery vehicles purchased on 2nd of January 
by the debit to the vehicles and the credit to bank or payable depending on how we finance those uh, vehicles. And then at the end of 2015, we depreciate both vehicles now, being the, the 150,000 divided by five times two of the two vehicles now, giving us the 60,000, the depreciation for both vehicles at the end of 2016. Uh, sorry, at the end of 2015. And on the, in 2016 financial period now, on the 31 March 2016 being the date of disposal now, we need to recognize the depreciation relating to the asset only that has been disposed. That we've worked out also now, giving us the 7,500. And this is important to, work, to help us now get to the carrying amount of this asset that's disposed. And so now, here we're recognizing now the actual disposal. And firstly, we recognize the proceeds that we would have received of 80,000, and we did recognize the cost of the asset of 150,000, and also the accumulated depreciation that would have increased on the credit side of 37,500, being the 30 from 2015 and 7,500 from 2016. We did recognize that as well. And we also recognize now the loss on disposal of 32,500, being the difference between the 80,000 and the carrying amount of the asset of 150 less 37,500, giving us 112,000. That's the carrying amount. And then the loss is 32,500. Important to note, the depreciation for the asset in the year of disposal needs to be recognized and it is very important that people do recall now here that when the asset is disposed of during the course of the year or at the end of the year, we do not simply jump into the accounting for the disposal where we're recognizing the proceeds and do recognize the asset, but it is important to recognize the depreciation for the current year as well. And so on our ledger accounts, this is how, the, how everything would be affected. On the first ledger account on our top left now, would be the, the vehicle asset account and would have recognized them by 300,000 when we initially purchased them. And as we dispose one of these vehicles, we, we did recognize it at its cost of 150,000 against the asset disposal account and would be left at the end of the year right, with the cost of the remaining vehicle now that has not been disposed of 150,000 to our left, to our right, sorry would be the accumulated depreciation, which at the end of 2015 would be made up of 60,000, being the accumulated depreciation of both vehicles. And then at, during the course of 2016, we would recognize 7,500 worth of depreciation relating to the, to the vehicle, delivery vehicle that has been disposed and 30,000 of the vehicle that still remains, making up the 37,500. And then, just like we've shown now pre on the previous slide, on the where we did recognize the accumulated depreciation of the disposed vehicle, we reverse the entire accumulated depreciation pertaining to the asset that has been disposed, which is the 37,500, leaving us at the end of the period with the accumulated depreciation of 60,000. That only relates now to the asset, the delivery vehicle that has not been disposed. And that is made up of the 30,000 from 2015 and the 30,000 from 2016. And so we can see from here on, now between these two ledger accounts that the only item that remains or figures remaining now relate only to the item that has not been disposed to the bottom left now would be our asset disposal account where we're now only looking at all the figures relating only to the asset that's been disposed the vehicle cost on the debit side and the accumulated depreciation on the credit side leaving us with a balancing figure now of the loss on disposal and on the bottom right will be the loss on disposal uh, loss on disposal account of 112500 and so now, let's look at how the disclosure now would look for this. The actual note now where you're reconciling the carrying amount of the, uh, at the start of the year or end of the previous year to the carrying amount of the current year. And we start off with 2015, the comparative year, which the item was purchased on the 2nd of January, which is now the movement. So we start off with the nil figures, and then we get to the additions of 300,000 being the cost of both v of delivery vehicles. And then the depreciation that would have processed during the course of the year for both delivery vehicles of 60,000, leaving us 200 and giving us 240,000 worth of carrying amount at the end of 20x1, which reconciles to the cost at the end of 300,000 and the accumulated depreciation of 60,000. The two which make up now our opening balances in 2016, the 300,000 cost and the egg dip of 60,000 giving us 240,000. And now we get to the movement of the current year. There were no additions in the current year, but now to note the depreciation for the current year is 37,500 being the 30 for the remaining vehicle and the 7.5 of the three months worth of depreciation for the disposed vehicle. And then we recognize now the disposal 
at cutting amount now. We've worked out this cutting amount being the cost now of 150,000 less the accumulated depreciation rate into the disposed vehicle of 37.5, giving us 112,500. And then when we cast all of that down, it would give us the cutting amount of 90,000, which ties up to now the cost at the end of the period, because at the end of the period, we only have one delivery, ve delivery vehicle remaining, costing 150,000 with an accumulated depreciation since acquisition to the end of 2016 of 60,000, reconciling back to the 90,000. And then from there on, if we take it now to the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income to see its effects now onto the financial statements themselves. And so in the 2015 financial period, we would only have the depreciation for both vehicles adding up to 60,000. And in the 2016 financial period, we would still have the depreciation for both vehicles. One, the remaining vehicles with uh, depreciations worth of 30,000 and the one that has been disposed in only 7,500 7 adding up to 37,500. But importantly now to note now the implication of the disposal, the loss that we would have realized now from disposing this asset at 80,000 when its carrying amount was 112,000 is the 32,500 which forms part now of our operating uh, expenses. And then the impact and how all of this would reflect now on our statement of financial position as at the end of 31 uh, December 2016 with the comparative year as 2016. And this would immediately tie up now to our note that we've just done. The carrying amount at the end of 2015 will be 240,000 made up of only the cost of 300,000 being the cost of both vehicles less the accumulated depreciation for both vehicles. And at the end of 2016, as we've pointed out already, it is only one delivery vehicle that remains. And it costs 90,000 and its accumulated depreciation is 60,000, being 30,000 of 15 and 30,000 of 16, giving us now the carrying amount of 90,000. So in other words, we're only reflecting now our carrying amount on the face of our statement of financial position that reflects to the reconciliation that is provided on the note. And let's just have a quick glance at the implication and the effect of all of this disposal onto our statement of cash flows now. In 2015, this is the year in which we would have purchased the asset. And so further down the screen, if you see now that acquisition, this is now an investing activity movement that we are looking at. And so we would have that acquisition at, in 2015. There's a cash outflow now of 200,000 when we are buying that, uh, those two delivery vehicles. And then in our adjustments now where we are reconciling, where we're doing our cash generated from operations, reconciling from the profit before tax, we would recall now from our statement of profit or loss and OCI, we would have processed a depreciation which is a non-cash item which we need to reverse out now in trying to get to the cash generated from operations, that is 2015. Moving into 2016, there was no acquisition anymore, but now we've disposed one of the vehicles and would have received proceeds of 80,000. And we recognize the exact proceeds now as part of our cash flow from investing activities. And on to our cash flow from operating activities, just like we've done in 2015, we reverse the depreciation as a non-cash item in and reconciling or getting our profit before tax to reflect only the cash flow movements now at the end of 2016. And we would deduct now the loss, sorry, sorry deduct the profit if, if we made a profit on loss or and add back the loss as it was the case in our scenario now. And so if we take it back to the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, when we worked out our profit before tax, we would have included into our operating expenses, the loss on disposal of 32 and a half, which we add back as a non-cash item since we would have recognized the actual cash element of this disposal, the 80,000 uh, as, as part of the cash flow from investing activities.